with the power of God's word. Welcome to Praise Tabernacle, the five-fold apostolic center, because we are people restored and inspired, serving everywhere. Reflection of the mountains or reflection of the sky on that lake. And today the Lord wants to do that in our heart today. He wants to still the storms and he wants to bring us into a place of tranquility, a place where everything is just still. The Bible says that we can hear the still small voice of the Lord speaking into our heart. So the areas in your life that you're struggling with, the Lord wants to speak into those areas and he wants to bring peace. When Jesus stepped on the water and he saw the storm, he said, peace to that storm. And what happened? The storm left. And so that's exactly what the Lord wants to do in our hearts today. Hallelujah. Amen. You ready for the word today? And one thing the Lord wants you to know is that you're not alone. How many of you this week have gone through some major trials and tests, whether physically, financially, in your family, with your kids, with your Spouse with whatever, just raise your hand if you've been going through some major trials and tests. So right away, if you look around, you, you're not alone. <laughs> you're not the only one going through it. We're all going through. And so today, that's the work that the Lord wants to do in our hearts today. How do, when we're going through, we need strength, don't we? And where does our strength come from? Our strength comes from the Lord. There is a well within us that we can drink from that will replenish us and refresh us and strengthen us. And so the Lord wants us to drink from that inner well today within us. The Spirit of God is within us. And, he, and we can drink this morning and receive strength. Some of you, even through worship, already feel strong. And now through the Word, you're going to even feel stronger before you leave this morning. So we're closing out the series. We started back in, I think, May, if I remember right, maybe June, the Gone Fishing series. And we've never done that since I've been here, a series all about evangelism. And this is not just for evangelists. This is for every believer because the Word of God says what? We're all called to, the work, to do the work of a... Every believer is called to do the work of an evangelist. We're all called to be equipped now, in this life, some of us, our trials are every week because our job is a trial. Hello? Our work isn't easy. The people we have to deal with every day are hard. Some of it's in our home. But right now, I'm talking about work. So I got a question for you. I just want you to shout out some, some, some answers. So what do you think is the most difficult profession in America? Parenting. Caretaking? Parenting. Parenting, yes. <laughs> pastoring. Pastoring, yes. Pastoring is a very difficult job. Garbage man. Pilot. What's that? Pilot. Pilot. Flying. Being president. Being president, very hard, especially with war and everything that's going on right now, the decisions you got to make. I know if my father-in-law was here, I was talking to him about this yesterday. He'll say at the second service, fireman, that's what he was. Fireman's very, there's some risky jobs. Firemen, police officers, you know, people on the front line of anything that's risky is a dangerous job. In 2017, I don't know what it was recently, but looking at statistics, 2017, the job that had the most fatalities in America was fishing. Anybody get that one? The fishing profession is one of the most dangerous jobs there is. Studying what it means to be a fisherman, I found out that to, if you're going to consider the profession of fisherman, you have to realize it's not a profession. It is a lifestyle. You have to live being a fisherman because fishing man, being a fisherman or fisherwoman <laughs> is not a nine to five job. You have to all, it all the term depends on the weather 
and when the weather is finally good, you're going to be out there. You can't think of clocking out. <laughs> Clock out when the weather changes, when you've gotten enough fish. It's a hard job, and the waves and the seas may just change suddenly, and then it becomes very, very dangerous. And so, talking about being a fisherman, and that was such a key thing, it's a lifestyle. So, for us, as fishermen, because what did Jesus tell us? Jesus told us what our, not profession, but what our lifestyle will be if we follow him. And he said what? You'll be fishers of men. So to follow Jesus means we're fisher of men. It's what we do if we follow him. Now, if we're just a churchgoer, we just show up Sunday morning. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We worship. We say amen. We hope the word will fit our life and maybe give us a little encouragement and support. But if we're followers of Jesus, that means being disciples, not just churchgoers. If we're disciples of Jesus, then we do what he does. And what is he doing? He's winning souls. So as a fisherman, you're looking always for every opportunity to reach somebody, to impact somebody, for an open heart, an open door, uh, uh, even on the job, even in your home, even in your neighborhood, wherever you're going, when you shop, everywhere, you're always looking and available for an opportunity to share Christ with somebody. And it can be in action, it can be in word, However it may be, it is a, and again, and you can do that even while I'm preaching. If you shared the gospel this week with somebody, light a candle. Put it, we're going to continue this even after this series. We're going to keep these lights up here. If you, during worship, if you have led somebody to the Lord, light this bigger candle again and put it right here. This is like an offering to the Lord for us following Him, being obedient. If you share the gospel, you light the smaller one. But make sure let's continue to light this platform with light because we've been sharing Christ. Amen? Amen? And so being a fisherman isn't easy, though, is it? Being a fisher of soul, reaching people isn't easy, are they? Are people easy? Are people complex? Are we complex? Yes. So it's not easy. It's hard. That's why we gather to in church more than anything is to get encouragement from one another to get support from each other because reaching people isn't easy soul winning is hard and that's why very few people do it very few Christians do it but it's if we're going to be to go before the Lord on judgment day and he's going to be able to say well done good and faithful servant it's what we do whether we like it or not so I might not like people. But if I'm following Jesus, that's what I'm about, reaching people, whether I like them or not, whether they're difficult or not. My calling in life is to reach people. So I go about it. I do it. Even the hardest people, as we're going to hear more about in our closing song today, closing dance, the Ninevites, reaching Nineveh, reaching the hardest people. So let's get into the last chapter of the book of Romans. Romans chapter 16. And the, ver the first 16 verses just have a bunch of names. It's not the beget names. This one beget this one, and that one beget that one. It's not a chronology of... of of generations, but this is names, and each of these names means something to Paul. In his closing of his letters, he usually gave some names out of people he wanted to uh, just greet. And we'll think, well, what's really deep about greeting people? It's important. Each of us want to know that we're important. Hello? That we mean something to somebody. That's what church family is all about. You should be known here. People should know you. People should, when you're not there, reach out to you and find out, is everything okay? 
And so Paul would always make this in every one of his letters to greet some people, the people that he was writing to by name. He knew them by name. He knew them personally. And then he would commend them for what they've been doing, the sacrifices that they have been made, that they've been making. And that's how it should be here in church, here in our, 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 our Christian community, is that we feel supported, we feel loved, we feel connected, we feel like people really are looking out for our best interest. When we're not there, we're missed. That is how it should be. That's what we're looking, we're working towards us becoming a closer family where we know each other's names, where we're connected with each other, where people reach out to us. That doesn't always happen. Thank God that he's always with us, that he never leaves us, he never forsakes us. He always speaks into our heart, but it's even better when his children also know us and connect with us. And so the first 16 verses, the majority of Romans 16 is just Paul greeting his friends, sharing about some of the sacrifices that each of these different people were doing towards the work of the gospel. And because fishing is difficult, we need support from each other. That's why I'm always going to encourage you, go beyond Sunday morning, get part of a small group. Small groups is where you can really get connected on a more personal level, where you get to know other Christians, and you get to learn about them, and you get to get prayed for, and you get to ask questions, and have that more dynamic relationship. That's where you get that support that goes beyond what you can get on a Sunday morning. But we're going to skip ahead to Paul's final instructions in his letter to the Romans, and that's verse 17 through 18. And so we're going from those who we should be connected to, which are people that support us, encourage us, lift us up, to now those who we should stay away from. Hello? <laughs> Do you know that there's people we should stay away from? Probably the people we should stay away from are those who don't encourage us and don't lift us up. Do you know that there can be people like that even in church? Pastor Steve and I cannot control who comes in and out of here. I mean, we're supposed to look for wolves. You know, and drive out the wolves if need be. But we're not like, you know, oh, you can only come in here if you're not a gossiper. <laughs> if you're not a backbiter. You know, because people will say it like, well, and they go to church. They're allowed, you know, and they're, they're from Praise Tabernacle. And look at that attitude and behavior. It's not like we can control people's attitudes and behaviors. You know, so you're going to find people even in church that you need to stay away from. Find those who are encouraging and those who are not. Keep a distance. It's okay. People are going through stuff. You don't understand it. But you just know that when you're around them, they're not very nice. They're not very friendly. They can be mean. They can be judgmental. They can have attitudes. There's no perfect church that's going to be full of perfect people until we go and step into glory. In glory, it will be perfect. We've been given new bodies. We are free of sin completely. We're no longer battling with sin. Then you can expect in heaven, in glory, in heaven on earth, there to be a beautiful group of people that everybody gets along. But until then... We got to learn how we cope with each other. And sometimes the best thing we do is just keep our distance. There's some people we just don't do well around. I would love if we could all just get along and we're just all happy. But dealing with people all the time, dealing with conflict all the time, sometimes the best thing, and see it biblically, Paul himself had to separate himself from Barnabas, from Mark. They went their separate way. So let's look into verse 17 here. And it says, And now I make one more appeal, my dear brothers and sisters. Watch out for people who cause divisions and upset people's faith by teaching things contrary to what you've been taught. Stay away from them. So anybody now, you get that peace that you can stay away from certain people. It's okay, according to the Word of God. 
as the Spirit leads you. Such people are not serving Christ our Lord. They're serving their own personal interests. By smooth talk and glowing words, they deceive innocent people. It is the nature of the flesh to be divisive. It's the nature of the flesh to be judgmental. It's the nature of the flesh to be a gossiper, to be a backbiter. And some of us are just in the flesh. And we got to watch out for those in the flesh. The flesh is like if you're jumping in water that has piranhas. That's what piranhas do. They bite flesh, you know. They're flesh eaters. And we got people that are just in the flesh, and that's how we are. If any of us decide today, if Pastor Steve and I, just because we're pastors, doesn't mean we're free of the flesh. We could wake up today, we woke up on the wrong side of the bed, and we got up, and we're just fleshy. So it might be good not to be around us today. <laughs> we might just be very fleshy. We have an attitude, you know? You know, you come in to get counsel, and we say, what's wrong with you now? <laughs> It can happen. We're human beings. We might get in the flesh. Now, it's expected that we don't. And so we try our best through the grace of God not to. But it's possible. Any of us in this life, in this age, while we still live in this flesh, we could still be led by it, controlled by it. And that's why we need to get under the power of the Holy Spirit every morning before we even start our day to put our flesh under. You know, I don't just let, let my dogs out. I put a chain on their neck. <laughs> and I walk them. I control them. Because they're going to go bite somebody possibly. Or they're going to get in a fight with another dog and cause a problem. So we have to control our flesh by the Holy Spirit. So we've got to be filled with the Holy Spirit every morning if we're going to be spiritual people. But if you're fleshy, then people might not want to be around you. But you don't have to stay that way because we've been given the Holy Spirit. We can put our flesh under. How do we get strong in the Lord? Those who wait upon the Lord will what? Renew their strength. They will mount up like wings. That means they come out of their flesh and they go up into a higher place, into the Spirit. And they behave like spiritual people who unite, not divide. Who don't cause divisions, but bring the body together. So you know who to stay away from. And it might just be for today. Sometimes it's our spouse. How many of us have tried to stay away from our spouse sometimes? We know when they got their attitude, when they're, you know, something's not right about them. So you know what? You sleep in the bed tonight, I've got the couch. <laughs> you know? We don't want to, but sometimes it's like that. We're supposed to work your problems out before you go to bed. It's the best way. But that's how it is sometimes. And so life is hard. People are hard. But this is the hope that we have. Our hope is in who? Jesus. Our God. Our God is what? El Shaddai. What is El Shaddai? The Lord God Almighty. We might not be very strong. We might be pretty weak. Apart from God, we all are weak. But our God is almighty. And we can look to Him. He is where our strength comes from. Romans 16, 19 says, But everyone knows that you are obedient to the Lord. So we need to stop judging everybody. Oh, look, that one's fleshy. That one's fleshy. That one's fleshy. If we're acting like that, pointing fingers at everybody, trust me, we're fleshy too. Our... What we're going to be accounted, accountable to God for is, are we obedient? Are we doing our part? Are we right with God? Are we right with each other? Do we have the right heart, the right attitude? Are we in the right spirit? We need to check ourselves first and just deal with us. Make sure we're right. And then if we're right, God will use us to help others get right. This makes me very happy. So what makes God very happy? When we're obedient to the Lord. I want you to be wise in doing right and stay innocent of any wrong. That's what Paul was telling the Romans. That's what's his de desire. Like a good dad, like a good mom. They want their kids to do right. They don't want them to be in the wrong. They don't want them to do wrong. Paul, like a spiritual father to these Romans, was like, just do right. Don't do wrong. Life is so much better when you're doing right. Guess what happens when you're doing wrong? Wrong things happen. 
For those who are doing wrong, you can expect wrong to happen to you. We reap what we... But the God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. May the grace of our Lord Jesus be with you. So this is our hope, that despite all the turmoil in the world, despite even the conflict within the church, I was talking to another pastor, and you know, our hearts is to see the body of Christ in our region unite, but you see so much fragments, you see so many churches, as split churches, so much politics going on, so much just division, but this is the thing we can stand on. The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. Look what it says, under your feet. Not just even under his feet, because we're the body of Christ. That means his feet is our feet. We get to put Satan under our feet. When we walk in the spirit, when we walk in the authority of God, we begin to put Satan where he belongs, under our feet. That grace is over our lives. Verse 25 says this, Now all glory to God, who is able to what? Make you strong, just as my good news says. The message about Jesus Christ has revealed his plan for you Gentiles, a plan kept secret from the beginning of time. So all glory to God, who is what? Able. He is able. How many of us feel unable sometimes? Feel like giving up. Feel like beyond. Things have gone beyond. You're beyond help. The situation's beyond what God can do. Sometimes we feel like that. Sometimes we have those thoughts in our head that we just want to quit. We fail. But what does it say here? God is able to make us strong. So no matter what we're facing in our life, in our marriage, in our finances, with our kids, on our job, no matter what we're facing, God is able to make us strong. And if God makes us strong, what does that mean? It means we can overcome anything. We are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. We just need to look to the one to whom our help comes from. Our help comes from the Lord. So if we look to Him, if we wait upon Him, the other, another word for wait there, if you really look into that Isaiah 40, 31, or 40, 29, that wait also means trust. So waiting and trusting go hand in hand. So if we trust in the Lord, we're waiting on the Lord. What is He doing? He's renewing our strength. He's making us strong so we can face whatever we got to face. But now as the prophets foretold and as the eternal God has commanded, this message is made known to all Gentiles everywhere so that they too might believe and obey him. All glory to the only wise God through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. So we're going to be good fishermen in this hard, difficult world full of complex people. The only way we can do this is our strength coming from God. Every morning, we can't take a morning off. Some of us think if we don't get our morning coffee, we're not going to make it through the day. That might be the case. But more than coffee, we need the Holy Ghost. Hello? More than stopping at Wawa on your way to work, we need the Holy Ghost. It's more important that we wait, wait upon God. And get our strength. If we can do that, we can ride the clouds. We can ride above the storm. The storms are there, but we're riding them. We're above them. And God is bringing us victory. This closing song, and this is the challenge for all of us in this ending the series, is let us make fishing our way of life. Lori has a testimony leading into the song. It's called Nineveh. There are hard places and hard people, but God has called us to reach them. As the worship's going forward, the dance is going forward, if you can have planted a gospel seed in somebody or led somebody to the Lord, come light your candles today. So when uh, Pastor Josh uh, started this series, 
It was a warm, sunny day. Andy and I were preparing for worship, and I just had this stirring within my spirit. And just kind of listening to the Lord and asking what's going on. And our friends came, um, Kim and Lance Klepp had uh, come that morning to visit. When I saw them, my insides just, I was like, oh, I leapt for joy and I ran over to greet them. And when I hugged her, I began to weep and cry. And I was like, I'm so sorry. I don't know why I'm crying, but I'm happy to see you. And she's like, well, if you figure it out, you let me know. And after worship that morning, Lynette, I don't know if you remember, Lynette gave a prophetic word about the goodness of God is there for everyone, that he set a table and his goodness is for us. And the Holy Spirit said to me, there's so many, Lori, that are sitting in darkness. There's so many that see that table, but they can't seem to get there. And they're sitting here today, and they're out there in the world. And I just began to weep and cry, and I was crying out. I was like, God, you know, have mercy. And so I left here, and I'm driving to go to the beach, and this song comes on. And it's a cry of the heart of the Father for those that are sitting in darkness. And I just could not stop praying and interceding and I put the song on repeat and I got to the beach and there was nowhere to park and the Lord said you go home and you travail you keep this in your heart and you keep praying and so I just was like I couldn't let it go and so this song is about Jonah and he had the worst pastoral job ever he was a Jew and asked to go into Nineveh to preach about a good God. And he didn't want to go. And I don't know if you know the story. It's a really good story. It's the book of Jonah. And the people of Israel read that book before Yom Kippur every year because it teaches them of a loving, compassionate God. It teaches them about a God who has forgiven them, has chosen them, has shown them grace and mercy and not to judge. And I'm going to just encourage you to read the rest of the book. But I feel like God is saying, wake up, wake up. It's our time, America. It's our time for, for the Lord to come and to move for revival for those that are sitting in those dark places to come into his glorious light. That's our job. That's our job. Nineveh is modern day Iraq, Mosul. What are they saying? The dark, scary places. God is saying, will you go? Will you go for me?
So when God gave mercy to the Ninevites, somebody had to go to them. And Jonah didn't want to go, but he went. He had no choice. The whale swallowed him up and spit him out in Nineveh. And these Ninevites were evil people. They'd kill their people. They'd kill the Jews, put their heads on, um, on sticks and, and just horrible things that they would do. And yet God had mercy. God is a God of mercy. And God wants his mercy to fill the earth. He wants his glory to fill the earth. He wants to wipe out darkness. That's what Jesus came to do, to destroy the works of darkness. But how does God do it? He does it through us. So when we look at all the darkness in this world, God is saying, will you go for me? Will you reach them? We can see Hamas is very dark, like Nineveh. But we can also see our neighbor, like Nineveh. Or a co-worker like a Ninevite. And God is calling us to reach everyone. And we just have to be willing. And even if we're not willing, God may do a Jonah in our life. <laughs> so let's pray. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for your word today. We thank you, God, for this series, how you've equipped us to be good soul winners. We know, Lord God, it's you that make us fishers of men. We don't make ourselves. It's your work. It's the work of the Holy Spirit. And so, Lord, in our spirit, we just say yes and amen. Have your way in us. We want to be obedient children to our Abba God, our Father. So, Lord, we just thank you, God, that we are here to go into this community, into our state, into our nation, and our world to bring your mercy, to bring your love, to bring your glory. We surrender our lives to you. 
And we just thank you, Father, for your mercy towards us first. And we give you all glory that the strength of Almighty God come upon each of us. El Shaddai, in Jesus' name, amen. If you need prayer. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the service and you want to learn more about the ministry, head over to the website at praisetabernacle.church where you can learn about all the ministries Praise has to offer. Find devotional content, weekly newsletters from the pastors, and much more. We hope to see you soon right here at Praise Tabernacle because we are people restored and inspired serving everywhere.